medicine, and also many other things. So uh, pray for them as they recover from having to spend the whole day with me. Um, today we have celebrating some birthdays, Hudson Eisman and uh, is it Michelle Poppers, Poppy, or Nicholas Poppy? It's good that I can read my own writing. And uh, and Michelle and Tejan are all having birthdays this week, and anniversary for Jean and Fern uh, Whitkey. So if you see them, congratulate them. Wish them a happy birthday or. A, a happy anniversary, and uh, we'll probably start singing for birthdays uh, in the future, just so that you can prepare your voice. So, uh, a couple of things also. Uh, I will be not here on this last Sunday of this month, and you will have the privilege of having uh, Jim Fruling here as, uh, as a substitute. Uh, some of you know Jim, and he's been here before in the past for Tri Saints. Uh, I will be with uh, Will Heitman and Abby Tuma. We're visiting the uh, uh, the Sunday service at the Lincoln's or uh, the Lutheran Center up at uh, L U N L, and we're trying to get some other uh, graduating seniors that are going to U N L to go with us at the to uh, learn about that ministry and get connected with those folks. So pray for us there as well. My wife is returning from Greece and Turkey on Thursday evening, so I'll be glad to have her back. Uh, I've been getting some limited uh, photographs of the Acropolis and uh, the ruins of the uh, Ephesus and a few other things, so it would be very interesting. Maybe we'll have her talk about that at some point at, what, at a fellowship meeting. So today, the Gospel on the third Sunday of Easter is always one in which the risen Christ shares food with the disciples. And meals that are the Easter template for the meal that we share each Sunday. In today's Gospel, Jesus both shares the disciples' food and shows them the meaning of, the, of his suffering, death, and resurrection through the scriptures, the two main elements of our Sunday worship. So let us rise as you are able for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may thrive in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake 
God. God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our entrance hymn is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, in the Blue Book, number 674. Please rise as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to this people on earth. Whom you see and know, 
and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 4 responsibly. And answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my heart suffer shame? How long will you love the hate words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Honor is on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might cease to live. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when not their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, may me lie down in safety. The second reading for this morning is found in 1 John. Chapters three, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And he took it 
and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Right. May I have the children on the board? I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to sit down here. Hopefully I can get back up. See the backs of your head. Why don't you come up here? A lot of walking. 
yesterday. <laughs> May these words from my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a well-worn saying, seeing is believing. In July of 2016, my oldest son and I moved Beth, my wife, to the Gettysburg campus of what is now called United Lutheran Seminary in Gettysburg, which is a prominent location for the first day of the battle for Gettysburg in the Civil War. You might have heard it referred to as the Battle of Seminary Ridge. William had studied Civil War in school when he was younger, but it became real to him in the three days we spent there. We could see the cannons in position, the different areas of the battle, the cannonballs and the bullet holes still embedded in the buildings. The seminary, as well as the churches, had been used as hospitals and the stories of sawed off limbs stacked up like cordwood were plentiful. The old seminary dormitory is now a museum with mannequins showing the wounded and the doctors trying desperately to save those soldiers' lives. Seeing is believing, and for the disciples, it was no different. During the Sundays after Easter, the Gospel lessons recount the stories of Jesus' appearances to those disciples. And therefore, the Gospel story for the third Sunday of Easter, taken from Luke's Gospel, bears a striking resemblance to the Gospel narrative proclaimed the previous week in the book of John. In each text, Jesus appears to the disciples. They are afraid and unbelieving, and he convinces them that he is indeed their teacher and friend raised from the dead. These two narratives do offer different, uh, significant differences, but for the average listener today, it may sound like we're repeating ourselves. In each account, someone has an encounter with Jesus, but fails to recognize him. Then there's an explanation of what resurrection means to us through the lens of Scripture. Then Jesus is revealed sometime, somehow by doing something physical, like examining his wounds by Thomas and by breaking of the bread with the two on the road to Emmaus or the eating of the fish with the eleven. Only then are their eyes open. And finally, Jesus departs, but in this week's instance, they are challenged to proclaim the good news of repentance and forgiveness of sins in the name of Christ to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. Hint, Pentecost. So that was then, and how do we process Jesus today? Now we come with our own doubts, our confusion, our fears, and misunderstandings. And each week, through worship, we encounter the risen Christ. We encounter Christ in the reciting of the scriptures and of the preached word that we are offered. This preached word offers us an explanation proclaiming the good news of what God has done 
and is still doing. We may eat with Christ, breaking bread of the resurrection in the Eucharist. In the, the Apostles' Creed, we confess that we believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that we believe in the resurrection of the body and the forgiveness of sins. We are sent to proclaim the good news to every nation, our family, our friends, and even to those who we meet casually. We proclaim it in many ways, even as a silent witness, in the way we treat others, in the ways that we behave. Now, does Jesus' proof of existence work on the disciples? Well, it's not clear that it does. However, the disciples' reactions certainly changed. At first, they were startled and terrified, and Jesus mentions that they may have doubts in their hearts. But after a while, they move on to a sense of joy. But they're still wondering, and even disbelieving. Even after he eats the broiled fish, no mention is made that he has persuaded them. In fact, nowhere in the story is any mention ever made of their faith or that they change their minds about the substance, about his substance, and respond to him as their risen Lord. No matter. Jesus just launches into his explanation about how the whole crucifixion and resurrection were part of God's plan, which was revealed in the scriptures. And then, in what is perhaps the biggest surprise of this whole interaction, he enlists them in the ministry of his mission. Jesus suffered, died, and rose again so that forgiveness of sins may be announced and lived in the way of repentance. You are the witnesses of these things, he says. And notice that Jesus coerces no one to believe, and neither does he exclude or belittle those who cannot or do not. He simply presents himself repeatedly in loving and in, in a non-aggressive way that seeks to reassure Despite what conclusions of faith we reach about his presence, we are still witnesses. Despite what the disciples eventually come to believe about the promises and prophecies revealed in scriptures, they cannot unsee the Jesus in front of them. They are witnesses. Sisters and brothers, this is the best description of the church's ministry, to be witnesses for Jesus, to be people who testify to the apostles' experience of eating with their real human Lord. We can and will reach our own conclusions about the mysterious truth that we're, that we're beholding, that Jesus is risen, but we cannot unsee it unhear it. We are witnesses to these things. We can and we will feel any number of emotions about this table the Lord gathers us around and about the heavenly food that we receive at it. But we are witnesses to these things. We're not called to argue for the existence of God. Neither are we called to coerce or belittle others into believing. And neither are we to be moral policemen or police women, lecturing others about what others should or should not be doing. But we can gently correct others' behavior and engage in a lively debate about God, given the right opportunity. The ministry of Jesus' disciples 
It's first and foremost to be witnesses to say, we have heard these things, and let me tell you how I have experienced the Lord's grace. And just as the disciples needed an authentic Jesus that day, just as the disciples needed that physically damaged Jesus to help them move from terror to joy, the world needs an authentic Jesus, a, a witness to Christ from you. You can be that witness. A witness that has a backbone and testifies against injustice and indifference. The church's call is not to just be people who gather every now and then to think nice thoughts about God. Let me leave you with some questions for you to ponder this week. How are we witnesses to Jesus alive today? Yeah, the disciples fed a hungry Jesus in this text. In this text, think of ways that you can feed others in Jesus' name this week. And lastly, Jesus proclaims the forgiveness of sins to all nations. What does that mean to you? Amen. This is where we be, oh. this is where we depart a little bit from our regular service. Gene, can you join me down here by the pond? setting new members of the churches the next couple of months. And this isn't in your hymnal, but <laughs> so dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Jean Garst, one with us in the body of Christ whom we welcome as a new member into the life and ministry of this congregation. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed, and we might as well rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and have sent, and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. <coughs> Brother, si brothers and sisters in Christ, or I should say sister in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of our baptism among God's people in this place? This is what we will also say. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for this new member in her faith in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome the uh, Jean in this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of, 
of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news of all the world. We give you thanks for all for our new member, Gene Garst, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit in the, in the breaking of the bread and the prayers and in service to others. Peace be with you. And also with you. You may share the peace with each other.
O oh God, our resting place, your Son, Jesus, promised that we are, that we are held in, in love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we, can, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that the Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Our sending him is, if you but trust in God, in the green hymn, number 350. Go in peace, be a witness, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.